Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here to see my pre-recorded video of my HCC 2022 presentation. So the topic of this presentation is uh, successive convexification for optimal control with signal temporal logic specifications. So in the context of uh, optimal control or the spacecraft applications, we have seen an increasing need for powerful and robust trajectory planners to do the applications like planetary re-entry, the descent and landing of rockets, and also the in-orbit maneuvers of satellites, like its interactions of, with the space station, for example. So the goal of uh, this research and, or the uh, solution we provided for this which is the SVX solver. So the goal of the SVX solver is to provide uh, some autonomous um, guidance functions with the consideration of uh, uncertain starting points and the changing targets and also the dynamic ops course and state or uh, input constraint. Yeah, so the problem formulation can be seen as this. So this is a non-convex problem which is a uh, typical uh, discrete time uh, formulation you can see here. So the F function here is the dynamics and the S function here represents the non-convex part of the state constraint. And we also have this uh, uh, convex part of the constraint, which is uh, written here as a set uh, inclusion constraints for the input variable U and the state variable X. Okay, so what's uh, S of X? So S of X is essentially a iterative algorithm to solve this uh, uh, problem we have seen in the previous slides. And uh, so the first step of S of X is a uh, linearization state. So we uh, linearize the nonlinear dynamics part of the equation. And also we have a uh, uh, proposed to use this virtual control term to be added to the uh, linearized equations. And uh, this virtual control term here is ensured that uh, the entire uh, system is uh, controllable with uh, uh, a special construction of this uh, E-matrix. And we also have uh, uh, tenorized this, uh, uh, S uh, this S inequalities and with the addition of this virtual buffer zone term. And we have penalized these two terms uh, into, the into the cost function by using this exact penalty function. So the details of uh, this S of X algorithm can be uh, seen in the uh, previous paper, uh, this one. So we will not uh, go into too much of the details here. And you can see that we are eventually solving a complex subproblem at each iteration. And uh, yeah, so we check if it's converged. If it's not, we will adjust the trust region, uh, trust region radius based on some uh, adjustment and we recompute. So that's the, yeah, that's the essence of the S of X algorithm. And so with that done, uh, we come to the um, STL part, which is the signal temporal logic. So signal temporal logic is, uh, is basically an extension of uh, the linear temporal logic just to the continuous signals. So it's essentially a way to express uh, those requirements that uh, in terms of time, formally as uh, predicates, and it can be defined in this way. And so, uh, so we say that if a uh, trajectory uh, satisfies some requirement, then it can be written as this. So, uh, so this uh, signal temporal, so there's, so there's uh, three prominent uh, uh, 
requirements uh, in the temporal logic. So the first one is the always, and uh, we also have eventually and the until. So you can see that so the always is just saying that uh, uh, this requirement needs to be satisfied for the entire time interval uh, from tk plus a to tk plus b. And uh, the eventually is just saying that uh, this requirement uh, just needs to be satisfied for once or uh, yeah, uh, in this uh, time interval. And the until is saying that, uh, so until the psi is uh, occurs, we need uh, the phi to be, uh, so phi needs to hold until the psi has been satisfied. Then we do not care about uh, whether phi is hold or not. Yeah, that's the until. And uh, yeah, so that's the predicating way to uh, uh, express the signal temporal logic. But since these are hard to uh, be translated into something that can be solved in a, in a, a solver or something like that, then yeah, so we need some way to encode this in a more uh, uh, controller synthesis uh, a friendly way. Yeah, so then we have this paper that uh, proposes uh, robust satisfaction by using this uh, uh, real valued semantics. So essentially we're saying that uh, if uh, this uh, whole term is greater than zero, then this uh, uh, requirement associated with row is being satisfied. So here we can just use uh, a minimum value of this uh, uh, term uh, along this uh, entire uh, time frame to be this uh, always requirement. Yeah, so as long as the minimum value is greater than zero, then this uh, requirement is always true on this uh, uh, on this uh, A and B interval. So the similar thing is for the eventually operator, and we also so the until operator is just a little bit more complex. So it consists of a composition of this uh, uh, two operations of max and min, but uh, yeah, so the idea is the same. So, so this is just a way to use the min and max functions of this uh, real value functions row to encode the STL uh, semantics. Yeah, so here we have some uh, general applications for the STO, and we have seen that uh, in the uh, uh, in the literature. So the first one it can be used to perform the offline pointering, and uh, and it can also be used to falsify a uh, property, which means that we want to find a trajectory that uh, makes the system. Uh, fail or the STO properties fail. And also we, so the main focus of our uh, project is to perform the control synthesis. Yeah, so essentially we want to use STO as part of the constraint, which is just, uh, so in addition to this uh, previous problem, we are, uh, we have this additional STO constraint. Uh, added to the problem. And uh, so here is just some examples of this STO constraint. Like it can be a thrust limit or it can also be this uh, state trigger constraint. So this is also a, a temporal logic one. So it can be, it falls very uh, actually with the STO framework. But uh, there are some challenges with this uh, formulation. So the first one, if you recall that we're using min and max functions for the formulation and uh, by 
doing that, we may need to use the Boolean encoding if we do not do any smoothing. So we may need to use the, so the STL specifications will become fixed integer constraint, which is not that easy to solve. And uh, it's quite expensive to compute if we want to solve the mixed integer programming problem. Okay, that's the first challenge. The second one is expressed as a non-convex constraint, but this part we have been uh, has been resolved by this uh, by our um, previous uh, work, so we can use uh, this uh, technique from um, Patchett to uh, do the control constraint convexification. We can also use the project and convexify technique to do the state constraint convexification. So this challenge is done. And we have also this uh, state trigger constraint as we have mentioned before. Uh, so there's some uh, previous work that trying to resolve this uh, constraint by doing this uh, uh, bilinear reformulation or the convex uh, encoding of this bilinear reformulation. But uh, then it still needs to use SVX to solve it or, uh, or in this convex setting, um, it, the theory for this is still unclear. And, but if we're using STL, then we can just, uh, so we can just uh, treat this uh, state trigger constraint as part of the special case. So it's just, uh, so we can just formulate it uh, by using this uh, uh, equivalence equation. So, uh, so yeah, so the implication can be, uh, uh, equivalently uh, written as the inverse P uh, and its junction of Q. Okay, so by doing this, we can translate it into a, a temporal logic constraint as well. Okay, so the core um, part of the proposition of this paper is this STL subdynamics. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, if we recall that we have this um, hex function, so here is uh, for the eventual operator. And uh, if we just uh, uh, expand this um, hex functions uh, for uh, all the time point, the equation is gonna be quickly getting out of hand. And uh, so if you, yeah, so in the SVX framework, we need to calculate the gradient for the uh, constraint, right? So we need to do the generalization with the gradient information. So if we want to do the gradient calculation and we have so many terms, then if we're applying the chain rule, it's gonna be uh, uh, super nasty. But uh, yeah, so if we want to resolve this issue, so we want to break this uh, uh, peak equation over the entire time interval into, uh, into pieces. So yeah, so the idea is that we can introduce this uh, uh, auxiliary variable y. So this y is for the eventual operator as uh, by using this uh, 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 recursive equation. So, yeah, so we have yk plus one is equals to max yk and rho xk plus one essentially. But here on the on this side, we still have uh, this k plus one term, but if we're using the dynamic equation, we can just uh, uh, substitute this part by using the state and control from the previous equations. Okay, now we can arrive at an equation that on the right hand side we just have the uh, stuff from the previous iteration. So on the yeah, so we, we have all the case on the right hand side, and we have y k plus one on 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 his side. So and we can rewrite this as a uh, sub dynamics. So we can uh, yeah. So so this is also in a dynamic formulation, right? So we so we call this Fy, which is the uh, uh, subdynamics for the uh, auxiliary variable y. So the same thing goes for the auxiliary var variable for the until operators. So we have uh, zeta and the 
theta. So here, so yeah, so recall that uh, we have uh, two terms here. And uh, uh, so after that, we can rewrite our equations as this. So this is a big equation that uh, captures the whole, the previous dynamics and the subdynamics we have introduced. And we can rewrite our uh, previous problem into a problem with uh, the STL subdynamics with, and this uh, additional uh, state constraint. And then we can just uh, apply this uh, polynomial smoothing technique from uh, this uh, uh, computer graphics source. So it's a better way to do the smoothing for just uh, two variables. You can see that uh, we only have two variables at a time. Okay. Yeah. So in the paper, we have uh, seen this uh, use case on the quarter trajectory planning. And uh, we have this until requirement saying that we do not get into a certain range of the destination until thrust reducing maneuver has been performed. And you can see that in the result, we have seen the first maneuver has been performed in uh, as row, row two. And uh, yeah, so until this time, uh, row one will always hold. So the result checks out. Yeah, so after that, we have also uh, explored the spacecraft uh, rendezvous scenario, but it's not in the paper. So yeah, so we are not gonna talk about this in details, but uh, you can see that uh, the STO can also be used to formulate this uh, quite complex systems as well. Yeah, so, and for conclusion, we have uh, proposed this uh, SVX STO solution method, which is an effective way to incorporate STO specifications as a smooth uh, uh, convex constraint in the SVX framework, and we can solve that for uh, uh, in uh, onboard in real time by using the SVX uh, solution method. Okay, thank you very much.